Hey there, everybody. It's Wayne D. Welcome to the website, swaind.com. And today we're going to look at the swing of an old buddy of mine, PGA member uh, Paul Oglesby. Paul uh, teaches down here in the winter and up in Philadelphia in the summer. Now, in the 90s, Paul was a, an excellent player. He played in two U.S. Opens, British Open in, uh, in 85, I think. And he won the Pennsylvania State Open in 1994. Now, after that, I can't remember what he said, this, the first back surgery he had, but he's had five of them, including a fusion. So he's got a lot going on that uh, has affected me at the same time. So I kind of understood where he was coming from. And when I was watching his swing, I could just tell, and he explained it to me, he just said, you know, he just got into these habits where he didn't didn't really feel like stressing his body out at all, and, you know, the body will avoid pain, and even when the pain and stiffness goes away, if the surgeries are, are somewhat successful, the body has a, a memory, and it tends to avoid the things that wind it up and create that stretch so I figured that's what we'd be working on especially after watching what was going on in these first batch of swings because the main complaint was and not only was it inconsistent in the contact it was just not producing very much distance so he'll play in some section events, club pro events, and when the course has a little length to it, it's at a, he's at a big disadvantage. So we're going to see right away what I would just call narrow. You know, the head's going to, the head's going to bob up and left, and in a, in a really important factor, the, the right arm is going to just stick to the body the entire time. And when it comes down, you're going to see the arms are going to look, look at that left arm way bent. Now, if I, should, if, I, if I slow that one down, you're going to see what good players all do somehow. He's going to get that grip right up to the ball. Draw a straight line, be better. And he's gonna put the club on the ball. So again, no matter no matter what, good players have a tendency to get the club on the ball one way or another. And the rest of it is what's gonna to have to get a little bit better in order to build up some more power. And then when we look at it from down the line, we'll see it start to lift. Again, you see that it's hard to tell from down the line, but that right arm is kind of bent up and narrow. And then in the downswing, you'll see the lower body kind of collapse underneath. So we'll lose some of that posture. And with that right arm tucked and the posture going away, that right arm is really trapped. So the club really doesn't have any way to kick back very good. And it gets way out in front of them, and it's just going to kind of slap the ball at impact and not produce much energy. So we need to, you can see right away, so we've got to, got to widen this thing up. We've got to get you to, you know, while being careful, and, uh, you know, anybody with a back issue, I'm going to, uh, when I get in there to try to move them around, I'm going to be very careful just to keep asking, you know, how's that feel, does that hurt? But, so the first thing I said is let's, let's, let's get, let's get the hands the, the takeaway to stretch out, uh, get some width in there, get some space under that right arm. And as the club goes to the top, really try to feel that the left arm is, is stretching out wide and the right arm is trying to help by pushing out in uh, the fashion that the golf machine calls extensor action, where that right wrist is pushing into the left thumb. 
at the same time the wrists are cocking. And this is pretty much what you expect when you wind up more efficiently and your body doesn't have that that old youthful mobility. You're going to expect the club not to be all the way back to parallel. Now the other thing that was a good addition once we widened up the swing or were attempting to widen up the swing is by by really trying to wind and coil the upper body more, the lower body really opened up so the hips got a lot more turn. Trying to get the, the pressure, we, we got the foot pressure a little forward at the front at the uh, address and then worked it back into that right heel. Want to do that without losing too much flex, but there's that top of the swing position. So we hit a few, we hit a few stop and goes like that. And you can see the still the tendency to pull that grip down in the stop and go. So we addressed that after we watched a few. And we worked on this for a couple hours, and trust me, I kept monitoring whether or not. Uh, this was going to take a toll, but uh, he stood up real well to the to the stretching. So one thing I wanted him to try eventually was to was to move from left to right and get a little more off the ball. So let's watch this one. So that looked really good to me. I really liked that little bit of right load, just about perfect. And then in the downswing, start with the legs. Now here's the here's the biggest thing that came out of uh, that came out of the lesson. If we watch the left arm on the approach. Again, this is the first swing. So when you look at those two positions, I mean, it's it's really what a difference to have that structure and radius in the left arm still. With the right arm obviously not as buckled and behind, much better position. So this is going to be able to, to deliver the blow with a lot more help from the trunk. So the muscles that were really, really working here are in the lower back, right where you know all the surgeries are, but we're trying to get these obliques to to stretch. And we're trying to get the the left arm and shoulder to reach that way without getting disconnected and that right arm I'm trying to get that arm to stay away from the body. So in the forward swing, and this is something to continue to try to improve, is not to pull that right arm down into the side like that, like you can see right here. So at, at P5, we still want to see space under that right arm, so we still want that width to remain. But it's pretty obvious how much, how much better that looks. Then we look at it from from down the line. You can see a huge difference, and this is actually in a, in a swing that he didn't stop at the top. So let's take a look at compare that one to the to the slow one. So again, this is. On the left there, that's the last swing of the day, and on the right, this was the first swing of the day, so we're going to go up. So stop and goes are one thing, and you know you're, you're making some progress when, you know, if you can tell when the player can actually produce the positions you're looking for, but when you look at a, a full swing without a stop, and you can see some real changes. And that's always really nice to see. 
So if you look at the difference in and and where that shaft is and the arms and the, just about everything here, um, more posture, more structure. The right arm's got more space. It's just not as steep. The shaft is in a much better spot. So pretty happy looking at uh, looking at the difference in those two swings. So it's really going to be a matter for Paul when he's working on this to be careful um, physically just to make sure when he's working on this, uh, getting extended and coiling more, that he doesn't overdo it because it doesn't do you any good to practice new things if after a day of doing it you can't do it for the next week. So <laughs> I know where that, I know what that is all about. But anyway, this was really encouraging, and uh, we had a good time.